All right, we are here with the RG350, and we're going to be talking specifically about DOSBox performance on here. When you buy the handheld, it comes with DOSBox app already installed. So let's open that now. When you open it, it basically will direct you to this app picker view or an explorer view. And it really is as simple as creating a folder on your memory card called DOS or whatever you want to call it, and then just create a separate directory for each game that you want. And when you get into this app picker, it'll recognize exe files as well as bat files and comp files. Jewel of the Jungle games work really well on here. Oops, I, uh, let's go back. So the way the keys work by default is the start button is the enter key. This is the escape key. Oh, let's see, I have it written down. This is the space bar is the X button, the control button, and the alt button, which you're going to be using these mostly. The Y button is by default left shift, which you probably won't be using too much. The bumpers are backspace, and then this button here, the left bumper will pull up your keyboard if you have to input something. A lot of these games will ask a question like yes, no, and this is an easy way to do that. I also found once you have the keyboard open, if you just tap this again, it'll toggle it on and off, which makes it very convenient. And when the keyboard's open, if you press X, it'll go to this kind of translucent view, which could be useful in some situations. I'm just gonna turn it down. And then if you hold down the Y button and use the D-pad, you can move the keyboard on screen in case you need to see what you're typing. So let's restore a game here so I can kind of show you how this runs. Um, this is not an easy level, so I'm probably gonna probably gonna die. <laughs> this game was uh, written by Tim Sweeney, who now is a multi-billionaire, created the Unreal Engine and Epic Games, and went on to do all kinds of crazy stuff. So you'll notice I'm using the D-pad. If you want to use the joystick, you'll notice it doesn't work right away. All you have to do is press the power button and B at the same time, and that will toggle the joystick on and off. So now you can use both the joystick and the D-pad. And that's really convenient because you can kind of seamlessly switch back and forth between them. And that power button plus B combination works for a lot of different emulators, not just DOSBox. All right, so we're done with Jill's Jungle. How do you quit? So you can press the escape button, which is this by default, and do it this way. Or you can quit using a shortcut key, which took me a while to figure out, but it's L1, select, and power all at the same time. And that'll take you back to this app picker view. So let me show you another game that works well on here is Ken's Labyrinth. If you decide to run this game, make sure you run Ken SB fix. That's the one that has the sound blaster fix. Otherwise the game will crash on the first level when you pick up the bubble gum. It's similar to Wolf 3D and better in a lot of ways. There's more focus on exploring, finding secret areas, collecting coins, which you can use to buy power-ups or there are slot machines in the game. This was written by Ken Silverman. He later created the build engine that powers Duke Nukem 3D. His website is still up in all its 1993 HTML glory. The game has some frame drops, which is most noticeable when you stand close to large animated sprites like these windmills. It's still playable though. I've made it to level 13 on here. This is Jazz Jackrabbit, which does not run so well on here. It almost, it feels like you're playing it in slow motion. Hopefully you can kind of see that. You definitely can feel it in the controls. And I did try tinkering with the settings. I tried changing this to low detail. I also tried reducing the audio bit rate to, from 44 to 22 kilohertz, but that doesn't seem to do anything. This is a great game. This is written by Cliff Blazinski, who also founded Epic Games and um, created Gears of War. You may have heard of Open Jazz. It's a homebrew port of Jazz Jackrabbit 1 for various platforms. I'm going to be frank, Open Jazz is a complete waste of time. It has graphics glitches, the sound effects are distorted, there's no music, and the biggest thing, you can't save your game progress. Yes, you heard that right, you cannot save your game progress. 
The port was created by a single guy and it's been abandoned for years. My advice, don't even bother. But wait, I have good news. Did you know there is another DOS emulator available for the RG350? Yes, it's called 086. The name 086 referring to the GCW0, which if you didn't know was a handheld funded by Kickstarter in 2013. It's the predecessor of the RG350 and all of these open Dingux Linux based handhelds that we're seeing today. I apparently missed the boat on this in 2013. I was too busy playing on my Ouya. 086 does not come pre-installed, so you need to do that yourself. It's not hard. The upsides, the emulator offers better performance than DOSBox and does allow custom key mapping for specific games based on the executable's name. However, it has poor compatibility. A lot of games just don't work or crash. Navigating to your games is quite a bit more clunky than DOSBox because it doesn't have an app picker. What you get is a C prompt, press A button to pull up directory contents, and then browse to your EXE. I also found AdLib music plays back poorly on 0x86, whereas it's always perfect on DOSBox. Listen to the opening of Ken's Labyrinth on 0x86. Now listen to it on DOSBox. You can see Jazz Jackrabbit runs much better on here. Neither emulator offers an FPS counter, and I need to mention that my camera is only 24 frames per second, but you should still be able to see the difference. You'll notice there's some info on the bottom of the screen there. A lot of DOS games run at 320 by 200, not 320 by 240, so that info at the bottom uses the remaining 40 horizontal pixels. It also shows which key map config it's loaded, what the controls are for that config, and it has a keyboard just like DOSBox. The downside here is it does sometimes crash randomly, and I've had it crash while saving my game progress. Here's Blakestone running side by side on both emulators. Much smoother performance on 086. On DOSBox, I would call this unplayable. Sadly, development on the 086 emulator was abandoned in 2014, so don't hold your breath for updates or fixes. Some games that work on this emulator are Blakestone, Blood at an unplayable FPS, Commander Keen 1 and 4, Cosmo, Duke Nukem 1, Epic Pinball, Ken's Labyrinth, and Wolfenstein 3D. Games that don't work, Duke Nukem 2, Jill of the Jungle, Prince of Persia, Sky Roads, System Shock 1, and Zong. That's 0x86 in a nutshell. Let's get back to DOSBox, I wanna show you some more games. Duke Nukem 1 works flawlessly on here. Duke Nukem 2 works well. The only oddity I found was the load screens take a long time. They take 30 seconds, not sure what's up with that. Once you're in the game though, it runs fine. Here's Cosmo, no issues with this title. This is Epic Pinball. It runs great on DOSBox, even the music and sound. The downfall here is the controls. In the original game, you use left and right shift keys for the flippers, or the left and right arrow keys. On the 350, the Y button defaults to left shift, so I have to use that for the left bumper and D-pad right for the right bumper. The problem here is my left thumb controls the right bumper, and vice versa. It's very confusing. Even though the game runs great, I find this unplayable because the controls are so unnatural. Unfortunately, there's no way to set DOSBox to load custom key maps for specific games. I'm going to talk more about this later. Skyroads, another classic DOS game that runs great on here. This is one of the few games with an ad lib soundtrack that I actually like. In the video description, I've included a link to a zip file on my website with a selection of these games that runs well on here, so you can try them out for yourself. Here's Daggerfall or Elder Scrolls 2. Bethesda released the full version for free on their website. It's a little tricky to get running. It works on here, but the frame rate is unplayable. This is like 2 FPS. Oddly, Daggerfall runs fine on a Pentium 100 megahertz. The processor in here has a clock speed of 1 gigahertz. It's supposedly dual core, but all the spec sheets say it's single core. And this processor is ancient. It came out in 2011. 
I think the performance issues on here are a combination of inefficient rendering by DOSBox and the 350's weak processor. Blood also runs terrible on here. This is unplayable. I have not tested Duke 3D on DOSBox, but I'm certain it would also be unplayable since it uses the same build engine. Luckily, there's the eDuke Homebrew port, which runs great if you want to play Duke 3D on here. There's also ports for other popular classics like Quake, Doom, Tomb Raider, Shadow Warrior, and Wolfenstein 3D, so you won't have to deal with the shortcomings of DOSBox. System Shock 1, this is unplayably slow, and there's no sound. I want to move on now and discuss key remapping in DOSBox and what's possible. What I found out is that DOSBox has a built-in key mapper UI and it can be accessed by pressing Ctrl and F1 on the keyboard at the same time. However, when you do this on the RG350, DOSBox crashes. No problem, we can manually create key mappings. Before we go any further, let me just show you what a key mapping file looks like. On the left column, these are the keyboard commands, spacebar, shift, alt, control key. In the right column, those key numbers represent the buttons on the RG350. So for example, let's just look at the first line. The spacebar is mapped to key 32, which on the RG350 is the X button. I made a diagram of the key codes for the RG350. These are basically identical to the GCW0's hardware. One hardware difference though is that the RG350 has two sets of trigger keys, so I don't know what the key codes are for L2 and R2. Okay, so we know how to make a key map, now what? I've connected my handheld to Windows via USB. I'm browsing to the DOSBox app data folder, you could call it that. We can see there's just one file in there. This is the DOSBox configuration file. This file specifies all the default graphics, CPU, and audio settings. But what I'm mostly interested in is this line, mapper file equals mapper-svn.map. This line points the configuration to the key mapper file. But oddly, there is no such file on the RG350, and I couldn't find it in the app repo either. While you can create custom key mapper files, there's no way to point DOSBox to a specific key map based on the executable's name. The way DOSBox works on Windows, you clone the shortcut to the DOSBox exe, then you add a command line argument, which points it to the location of the config specific for that game. However, this doesn't appear to be possible on the RG350. I was able to modify the default DOSBox config and point it to a custom key map. This did work. In this example here, you can see I was able to remap the pinball flippers to Y and A. But the problem is this is a global configuration and it's applied to all games run in DOSBox. But this may still be helpful to someone if you want to customize the default key mapping. Unless you're dying to change the default controls on DOSBox, you don't need to bother with any of this remapping. Overall, I'm impressed with DOSBox's compatibility, but let down by performance and missing control remapping. In some ways, you get a better experience on this handheld compared to PC, especially PCs of the 90s, which didn't offer IPS screens, joysticks, or portability. You couldn't lay down on the couch and play Jill of the Jungle. This key layout is also much more comfortable than using the control and alt buttons on a keyboard. Add to that all the other emulators and games this thing runs, and it's really an impressive little package. That's all for now. Leave a comment below if you have anything to add. Thanks for watching.